Hello, I'm Greg Rutke, Rutke Mods, and welcome to episode 10 of my iPod series. In today's episode, we'll be introducing you to my 15 gig third generation iPod, which, there it goes, turns on now. Um, <laughs> this thing has never been opened from what I can tell. It's in pretty decent shape for what I uh, paid for. It's pretty impressive and it's fully functional. The battery still works and these had really bad batteries in them. But we're going to be doing more and then, and then just um, showing you this thing. We're going to be upgrading it with my iFlash Solo that I had in my iPod Classic, a 64 gig SD card, um, which well, we'll just put in right now. Click, it's in, and we need the adapter, which are on um, back order from um, them right now, but I found a seller on eBay that was selling the official ones, and it came in in two days. It was very impressive. But um, this is the adapter for fourth and third generation iPods. Now, this adapter, uh, the iFlash Solo, will not work in a first or second generation, even though it would fit with this adapter. Right here, it, it just won't work. And that's because of the uh, what I've read, the FireWire controller in those systems, and they just don't work with larger drives, especially flash-based larger drives. So um, that's one thing. And then the other thing about these is, uh, I've been reading online about this for years now, because I've, I've had, and this is my third, third gen, I've got a uh, 240 gigs, one sitting next door and one sitting at uh, Colin Mister's because it won't sink anymore and he was going to try to fix it. Um, and I was considering upgrading one of those to a 60 gig hard drive, at least a 60 gig hard drive. Um, and back in the day I read it was possible, but um, the guy never really shared how he did it because these things only work up to 40 gigs, uh, the hardware with uh, Mac formatting anyway. Uh, apparently, these will work with bigger drives and flash drives. And iFlash says that this thing will work in a third gen, gen but it will not actually, uh, they actually don't do any info about it. Uh, and it's really something that I don't think they officially support, but they say it will work where the fourth gen they do support and they do have information on how that works. But uh, this thing, the problem is it, it just does not recognize the drive when it's bigger, um, when it's formatted differently and whatnot, and that becomes an issue. But there is two workarounds I've found um, that combined should fix it. Uh, the first uh, part of it is uh, it needs to be Windows formatted, um, otherwise it just won't work. And uh, this is Windows formatted already, uh, but I'll be using a Mac to do this, so I've already imaged the disk, and um, you'll see how I did that in a second. Um, but it's got to be Windows formatted, and you can only sync it over USB. The FireWire controller apparently has the same issue as the first and second generation. It just will not sync over FireWire. So luckily, these sys this is the one thing I've always hated about these iPods, because this is my favorite iPod. Uh, it's so cool, and it's all touch control, which is also really neat. Okay, all of this, there's no physical buttons, it's all touch. It's the first iPod touch. And the only moving part on it is the hold switch on the top of it. But the problem is with these things is they will only charge over FireWire, but this was also the first device that supported USB syncing. So you have to have a special wire to charge and sync at the same time if you want to use USB. Luckily, I have that wire right here. I have two or three of them. Um, and this is my newest one, which I opened up in, I think, episode six, uh, this cable right here. So we'll have this plugged in the wall when we're syncing it. And uh, that's, that's the only big issue with these things, firewire sync, uh, charging only. But yeah, in today's video, we'll be uh, putting this iFlash into it, and let's get to it. Okay, 
so before we do the upgrade here, I just want to show you really quick. That's what it looks like, 15 gig, third gen. It's all ready to uh, be swapped, so we'll see what we can do here. All right, so I'm currently imaging the drive with my uncle's new MacBook Pro that I built recently. It's currently imaging the drive that's in this, and then I'm going to put it into this SD card and see if it will allow me to auto boot and see if it will actually work. So we'll see what happens. Okay, yeah, so the disk utility didn't work. So we're going to use carbon copy cloner. Disk utility just froze. So we'll see if this works this time. Six seconds to copy 11 files which should be all the files and the file structure, in theory, that the SD card needs. So I'm going to restore it to the SD card, plug that in, and see if it pops up. Okay, there's the SD card. And what we're going to do is choose the source right here. Let's... Um, Hit that, and restore from disk image, sparse bundle, well that's nice, yeah this might be harder than I thought. Okay, I just had to um, change the uh, source by restarting everything and not let me do it, so let's select the destination and hit clone. Continue anyway. It should just do it. There we go. We should have the SD card all set up for um, the iPod. So let's hope that worked. Okay, so looking at this uh, device now uh, more closely, this has been opened at least once before. There is a nick up here, and there's some nicks down here in the plastic, not on the case. So whoever did this did it properly mostly, uh, but there is signs, plus the case is a little warped right here. But that is also a common problem with the third generations, the back cases. Um, they carried this back case over to the fourth gen, and uh, it's literally the same design as the fourth gen, only slightly thicker. Um, but they improved the quality of these cases. The third gen cases are known for warping when you open them, and this is slightly warped. Um, I don't have the proper tools to open it today. So we're going to try to open it without marring it. So let's see if I can do this uh, without breaking something. So let's um, first get something in here that is strong. There's another trick to getting these open sometimes. If you squeeze it tight enough, you can get a little uh, piece right here open where you can jam something into it, like this jimmy. Might go in there. It does. There we go. That simple. And then you just can push down and work down words and open it up that way, like that. Pretty simple. Uh, these cases were a lot easier to open and yes, now I can see this was indeed open before because that's damaged right there. That's where that nick is. And um, that's a dead giveaway, it's been open because you just saw me open it, I put it right here and the damage is right there. So let's open it up. This is a lot easier to open than the uh, classic for sure. All right, there we go. We're inside. Disconnect the headphone jack. Maybe. These are also known for um, breaking the connector off off the board. So you gotta be really careful with these. I broke the headphone jack. Well, that's the end of the day's video. Like I said, these are very fragile. And now I'm extremely mad. Crap. Um, well, 
let's finish doing the video. It got actually really stuck in there. There went the connector. Where'd it go, Starlock? Anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't have a replacement one of those. Yeah, it sucks. I tried to be careful with that. Oh well. Anyway, let's see what they've done to this first. Yes, it's got a brand new battery in it, as we can see right there. It is not the original battery. So, um, let's pull the hard drive out. And, um, well, that sucks. I'll have to look for a new one of those. He didn't, also did not put the battery in properly, and it's not even glued down. But it does seem to be a high-quality battery, so that's a win at least. But, um, yeah. Well, that sucks. Well, and the nice thing is it will still play music through the dock connector until I can get a new headphone jack. Uh, oh well. It's not a huge deal. So I'm going to now put this into there. Uh, and uh, one second while I um, configure a few things here, I'll be right back. So $18 later, I have a new headphone jack coming in the mail from Kentucky. Um, found the piece that ripped off. It took all the pads off the ribbon cable with it. Like I said, these are notorious for breaking. And I didn't think it was going to break, but it broke. Oh, well. So I did realize I do have one problem. Actually, come to think of it, I don't, I forgot, the headphone, the uh, hold switch isn't on this um, like it is on the fourth gen. It's actually on the board, so we can, we'll still be fine. Uh, so, we're just not going to put the back plate back on when we rebuild it. So let's um, put the uh, adapter in. So first, I'd say let's reuse the pad and stuff on this, like so. And this is the original hard drive. It's a MK154 GAL, 20 gig Toshiba drive. So that's cool. And what we need to do is take this, and I've already looked it up to see if I'm putting this in right, and I should be putting this in right, so <laughs> let's hope I'm putting it in right. Plug that into that, like so. Make sure all the pins were actually plugged in right. It looks like it. And then we literally just take this, flip the tab up, and hook it in. Like so. Lock it down there. And there we go. Then we take this, plug the ribbon cable back in, Maybe. I think that's plugged in. We lay it down like that. And now it is ready to be tested. And this seems awfully thick. I don't know if this will actually fit back into the case, right? We might have to take the rubber padding out of it. But right now we're just going to see if this works. Uh, and I'm 50-50 on this working, so we're going to find out if it does. So, there it is. Let's uh, hold, take the hold switch off. Uh, like that. And hit the power button. And it didn't work. That could be a problem. Um, I want to see what I can do to uh, get it to work. Okay, so I'm not going to show you what's on the screen right now, but um, I have a Mac in front of me, and even though it says it won't work Mac formatted, we're going to try to see if it works Mac formatted. It actually is reading the whole drive like it was when I uh, had it restored, so we're going to see if I can just get it to work. So update, iTunes will only let me restore it over FireWire on a Mac. And I'm 99% sure it will not restore with FireWire on a Mac. So, this is an issue. Um, I'm not sure what to do. 
I guess I'll have to um, try to boot this into Windows and install uh, iTunes on it. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, so yes, it, it does indeed have a FireWire sync issue. I decided to plug it into FireWire, and as we can see, it is trying to sync. Uh, it's so slow <laughs> that it, it's... I don't know if it's going to be recognized by the Mac, um, and eventually it's going to uh, put a prohibited sign on here, try to draw it at least. Um, it just, it's just, it's so slow, as we can see, that I understand why you have to sync this over USB, because the FireWire controller just does not work. But I'm going to see if it sees it on the computer, but I highly doubt it will. Uh, we're definitely going to have to go to um, Windows, it looks like. So I'm trying a different trick here. I'm going to restore it to Mac first with the original hard drive and then clone that and try to stick it on here and see if it works. So we'll see if that works because iTunes did identify it as a 64 gig iPod, um, but uh, it still wouldn't boot because it needs restored properly. So. Let's see what happens. Okay, so Disk Utility still didn't let me clone it, but Carbon Copy Cloner is actually cloning the entire drive properly this time, it looks like, and it finished in 52 seconds, uh, and it looks like it actually imaged the whole drive properly, so we're going to see if it will go onto the flash now and if it will boot afterwards. Okay, so Carbon Copy Cloner has copied the whole drive back over to the SD card. Let's flip it around. And let's restart it from disk mode. See if it boots this time. It doesn't. We will have to use Windows. Okay, so I got iTunes installed on Windows and uh, we're getting ready to restore it and see what happens. So I'm going to hit restore right here. Restore and update. Next, agree. Let's see what happens. Could not be restored. Unknown error occurred. Okay, so now we're going to format it with disk utility. Or, um, not disk utility, um, disk management on Windows and try it again. This is getting on my last nerve and I know it will work. So yeah, formatting it with disk utility was a bad idea. I mean, disk management, Windows, and it is getting confusing. So I, uh, it, it, it screwed it up so badly I had to actually remove it from the adapter, plug it directly into the SD card slot where it still would not read it because it could not identify how big the drive was anymore. So I had to download SD card formatter from uh, the SD um, union or whatever it's called, the uh, people that actually came up with the format, uh, the, uh, the, the, the SD thing. So um, I downloaded SD card formatter and have wiped it with that and it's reconstructed the whole drive. Now we can plug it back into the iPod and try to restore it again. All right, so here we go again, it is restoring and it's getting further this time. Let's hope it works. Hey, it just finished. Now we can restart it. Hope this thing works. I'm gonna probably have to plug it into FireWire, which we'll see if it needs it or not. Yes, it needs it plugged in. So we can just literally plug it into this FireWire port on the Mac and it should work. Like so. Hey, it's restoring. Yeah, you literally have to do it with Windows formatting. That's so stupid. Let's unplug it from the thing before it corrupts something. Let's 
trying to do it. English settings about. And there we go. We have it, guys. It is indeed working. Let's uh, hold in. I think it's menu. Yeah. There we go. It is a flash iPod. Now, I want to actually go to a 128, but this was the biggest um, one I had. I think this will go up to a max of 128. I'm not totally sure. Um, I know the iPod Mini can go up to 256, but uh, it starts struggling at like, I think it's 90 gigs on an iPod Mini. And this is similar in hardware, but it is working. We made a flash third generation iPod that actually works. And um, we just had to use Windows and USB because it would not do it any other way. But I am very happy with this result here. It's going to work. And uh, I'll do an update video on this once I get the new card in and uh, the new headphone jack, which I destroyed. So I'm just not going to put the back plate on for now. Um, and sorry, I, I bashed that with the uh, bill of my cap there. But yeah, it's working. And let's see here, let's do the backlight again. Menu. It's a set backlight so it stays on. Backlight timer. 10 seconds. There we go. It's working. And I'm really excited to use this. Uh, I will have to, uh, of course, fix all that stuff first. I'm going to get a better SD card for it. But this is a proof of concept. It worked. I made a 64 gig third generation iPod in a 15 gig case, which I think it will fit totally fine in. And this is literally like half the thickness of a uh, 40 gig. So this should be nice if it all fits. And I think it will. Let's see. Old hard drive would have sat right here. We might have to take the pads off, but it should fit. So it's awesome. So that's the end of today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching me uh, about snap and break this thing in half. Um, actually, you probably didn't see that because I don't think I filmed that part. I was getting pretty darn mad, but it's working. You have to format it in Windows. It has to be in FAT32 uh, format for it to work. And um, the reason why you can't have it in Mac format is because to restore it, you have to have FireWire, and the FireWire controller does not work with this. So you have to use USB. It's kind of a problem, but once it's formatted in Windows, this will sync to a Mac. Um, so I don't, I don't know why Mac still, um, if a Mac formatted iPod will still do it in HFS, um, but... A Windows format is FAT32, and it syncs with FAT32. So I don't know why they did that, but hey, it works. And we will do a follow-up video on this very soon, uh, where we actually finish putting it together, and I show you some neat things about it. But for now, that's the end of today's video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, guys, that I um, do have a Patreon if you'd like to support me and see these videos a day early, uh, sometimes even earlier than that. Uh, just check out the description below or uh, at the end of the video, there'll be a link. And uh, help support me. It helps me buy stuff like iFlashes and all these adapters and all this other stuff to uh, make fun videos like this. And... Uh, Thank you once again, guys, for watching. This has been a Rutke Mods video. So, a little bonus material here, guys. I forgot to actually show you what it actually looks like when it's actually plugged into iTunes um, on a Mac. So let's hit continue. And there we go. It's uh, 64 gigs. It's all set up. It's got my uncle's name on it because, yeah. Or have to fix that but hey pretty neat it officially identifies as 64 gigs and it actually does work even though it's windows formatted it works totally fine so that's awesome